This is GTV, pure magic. In this episode, I will tell you a story, a rather amazing story, one that had far-reaching effects on the pop culture in Japan and America, affecting the worlds of literature, anime, music, television, and gaming. It's a long journey there, but stick around for the ride, and you'll come away amazed. So let's go. Our story begins long ago, in 7th century China, when a Buddhist monk named Zhuanzang left China for India to study with scholars and holy men to produce better Chinese language versions of Buddhist scripture. Zhuanzang left against the orders of the Emperor Taizong, who forbade his subjects from traveling to other lands. Zhuanzang traveled for 13 years across the whole of ancient India, visiting holy sites and studying historic texts. When he returned to his homeland in China, the emperor, Taizong, welcomed him warmly for his efforts, even though he had violated his edicts. Xuanzang was given financial support and with it built monasteries for study and reproduced his translations of sacred Buddhist texts. As well, he chronicled his journeys with the help of his disciple, Bianji. The texts are known in English as the Great Tang Records on the Western Regions. The book is a vital record of the economy agriculture, climate, geography, people, and daily life in the regions in which Zhuanzang traveled. The book has survived since the 7th century and is still in print today. Zhuanzang died in the year 664 and would be remembered and revered in ancient Chinese culture for centuries afterward. Though he had written his own chronicle of the journey, in the years following the life of Zhuanzang, Folk tales and legends began to appear about his life. Around the year 1000, the folk tale had coalesced into a standard tale of a monkey who travels westward seeking knowledge. In the 16th century, the oral histories of this tale that had been passing around for almost 1000 years were put to print, known in Chinese as Ji Yo Ji. In English, this literally means West Wandering Chronicle, though the proper title in the modern day his journey to the West. The book was published anonymously, but is generally accredited to poet Wu Cheng'en. The dynasties of ancient China held great power then, and its sphere of influence spread across Asia. Writings, philosophies, and technologies flowed from China to Japan, Korea, Vietnam, and other regions outside the dynasty. Though the order of the world is quite different today, ancient China is still held up in high regard similar to how European culture looks back on Roman and Greek influences. Journey to the West would make its way to Japan, along with the other works that comprise the four great classic novels, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, The Water Margin, and Dream of the Red Chamber. As time progressed, Japan rose as a powerful nation in its own right, but retained many of the ancient Chinese influences it received. As a result, Journey to the West, known as Sayuki, in Japanese, went on to be a treasured work for the Japanese as well, being taught in schools for centuries. From the time Journey to the West was published until the mid-20th century, the book was unknown in the Western world, but did receive an abridged English translation by Arthur Whaley in 1942. For centuries though, the novel was the only version of the story that existed, but all that changed in 1978, when Journey to the West would be reborn and live on in pop culture around the world ever since. In 1978, a song released by rock band Go Die Go gave a funky 70s retelling of the journey with a song called Monkey Magic. Go Die Go were comprised of Japanese and American musicians. The group had a standard 70s hard rock sound blended with a little funk and a mixture of English and Japanese vocals. With lyrics like, born from an egg on a mountaintop, the punkiest monkey that ever popped, Monkey Magic was a unique take on the classic tale. In fact, it had never been done before, standing out as a big surprise when the single was released. It also put a well-known work that by 1978 was essentially homework in high school and gave it a makeover, putting Journey to the West in the pop culture spotlight. Monkey Magic was a massive hit in Japan, despite the whole song being English. 
The song peaked at number two on the Japanese Oricon music charts, was released internationally, and went on to become the most well-known song by Go Dai Go. Monkey Magic was then included as the opening theme song for a TV series based on Journey to the West, which ran for two seasons. The show was known in Japan as Sayuki. The show would later receive an English language dub and aired in the United Kingdom as Monkey in 1979, as well as Australia in 1981. The soundtrack from the show, featuring songs by Go Dai Go, would be a number one album for eight straight weeks in Japan and the best-selling album of 1979. Thanks to the song and the show, Journey to the West was a very hot property, and from this, a wave of inspiration followed that would be derived from, influenced by, or simply name-checked the book, TV show, and song. In 1979, Nintendo would release an arcade game with the title Monkey Magic, cashing in on the popularity of the song. The game imitated Atari's Breakout, where the player smashes blocks with a bouncing ball. The field of blocks in Monkey Magic is a monkey's face, wearing a bandana like that worn by Son Goku, aka Monkey, from the TV show. From there, the influence of Journey to the West led to the creation of a long-running manga and anime series, Dragon Ball. Though altered in certain ways to make Dragon Ball its own story and to keep its own story exciting, it is an unmistakable homage to the classic book. Dragon Ball became its own empire and has had multiple video games released over the years on all kinds of hardware, ranging from the epic Super Cassette Vision to PlayStation 4. One of the first, but not the first, was Shenlong no Nazo for the family computer. When the game was localized for America, references to Dragon Ball were taken out, and Goku was changed back to Monkey, with the story being rewritten back into Journey to the West. Dragon Ball elements were retained for the game's French version as an aside. But there were other Journey to the West games released around this time as well. Monkey Magic was released for the Commodore 64 in 1984 in the United Kingdom and Europe. The game tries its best, to fit as much from the TV show Monkey into the game as it could across four stages. There was also a version for the lesser C16 machine with only the first level of the game. 1984 also saw the game Sun Sun be released in arcades with the main character Sun Sun named after Sun Wukong and the game involved Sun Sun traveling to reach the statue of Buddha. There was yet another game and it's surely the most popular. Sega developed Alex Kidd and his series of games with Sayuki in mind, probably to keep the character original, and because Goku was already taken by Dragon Ball, Sega gave him the rather western name of Alex. But the mythology of Alex Kidd is similar to that of Monkey, as he was born from a mountain and lived there alone for years, practicing his kung fu techniques, until the time came where he was called to embark upon his quest. Sure, the whole rock-paper-scissors thing was pretty out there, but the clearest connection to the show is that Alex Kidd wears a nearly identical outfit to that of Monkey from the TV show. Throughout the 80s, the revival of Journey to the West continued. The songs, the show, the games, and Dragon Ball helped turn an ancient novel into something cool. By the mid-90s, the tributes to the classic work had died down, with Dragon Ball being the most popular. As a wise man once said, the nature of monkey is irrepressible, and in the 21st century, a new generation of monkey tributes were born. In the year 2000, a new anime series aired in Japan called Monkey Magic. Of course, the story keeps the usual familiar ties to Journey to the West, but tells a somewhat original version of the classic tale. When a meteor strikes the Earth, a young monkey named Kongo is born from it, though the stone monkey as he is called, is not accepted by the other monkeys until he deposes the king of the tribe to become their new leader. Over the course of the show, Kongo travels the world to seek strength and knowledge to defeat his rival Nata and the celestial forces of the heavens led by the Jade Emperor. Monkey Magic the Anime was localized for America and aired on UPN, making it the first true variant of Journey to the West released there without any major changes being made to the original. Monkey Magic also had its own game for the Sony PlayStation released in conjunction with the TV show. All of these media, TV shows, games, manga, were born from a single song, 
Naturally, the music world felt the effects of the original hit as well, as it has been covered by a number of different singers and groups since 1978. But in 2004, the long trail that Go Die Go began had come full circle when a rock band named Monkey Magic debuted in Japan. Much like Go Die Go, Monkey Magic is comprised of Japanese and foreign members. The name of the group was inspired by the original drummer, Tom Pritchard, who was British and grew up watching Monkey as a child, paying homage to the opening theme song. They would later cover the songs themselves in 2007. The popularity of Monkey Magic The Band brought Go Die Go to light for a younger generation and to relive the glory days with the older generation prompting them to reunite permanently. That's pretty amazing. But the influence of Go Die Go doesn't end there. Though the group was inactive from 1985 to 2006, a few members composed video game music during that time. A few you may have heard years ago and never knew it was from them. Singer Yukihide Takekawa composed the soundtrack to Soul Blazer for the Super Famicom. And lead guitarist Takama Asano was a composer for Shin Megami Tensei, Devil Survivor, for the Nintendo DS. It may have been the show Monkey, Dragon Ball, the rock band Monkey Magic, or something else entirely that you may have encountered at some point in your life. Maybe it was all of them, but they all derived from one man and his quest for knowledge. You could say, in a way, his journey has never ended. <laughs>